My name is Anton Antich. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Integrail, the platform for easy no-code creation of AI agents. So deployment and Q&A, another very interesting topic and the early customers that we have, especially from the enterprise, they really love it. So what do you do when you have created uh, the agent and you're happy with it? How do you access it? Uh, again, there were some questions. How do we put them to the practical work? Actually, now it's just one button. I press deploy to cloud and that's it. It gets deployed to cloud. Uh, we can move from my local environment here to the staging environment because there we actually have some agents that are deployed. Uh, here we have a settings tab for your uh, company account, and then we move to agents and it shows you all the agents that are deployed. So these are all the agents that we currently use in our testing work. Also for some of the additional solutions that we build using these agents in the background. So basically, once again, if you don't want to interact with an agent using this uh, chat API, or not the API, but chat interface that, that we've been using, but you want to create some sophisticated UI, you're able to do it because all of these agents that you deploy to the cloud are uh, accessible via API. And here you can see all the parameters that you can use to call them. And we have an SDK available, which we will make public next week so that if you want to still do some coding, you will be able to, even though with all the integrations, it's uh, not necessary. But if you want to create a custom solution, uh, of course, uh, you're welcome to do that. This is the deployment part. Um, then there is also a benchmarking part. Benchmarking part is very important. We have several tools to do that. Uh, this one, Cafe Agents in the Labs, is uh, a very a simple one that just allows you to compare different uh, models side by side. You can enter system prompt, you can enter user prompt, and just see uh, whatever the answers uh, they come back with. This is very useful for quick testing. For instance, to the question about JSON, I can test which uh, LLM produces the JSON predictably here. But this is just uh, for quick assessment. Then what we have is a questionnaire tool where you can create all kinds of questions and answers. And then you are able using this questionnaire to run the benchmark by selecting, again, different models and picking the questionnaire and then running it. Uh, I'm not going to run it live because it takes some time. But the point is that uh, all the models or all the agents that you have selected answer the questions to your questionnaire. And then we have another agent that grades them automatically. And I have a, a nice example of the, uh, of the results like that here on our production sites. So let me just go to my bench. But, but Anton, you're not, you're not able to plug in multiple um, LLMs for your workflow and see how the workflow actually is better or worse based on which one you're using or anything like yes. that. This is, this is exactly the goal of this because you can create different workflows between different LLMs in your agents, and then you can include your agents on this uh, benchmark uh, runs as well. But, so this is, but it's not there yet. You can't do that yet. Uh, yeah, no, not yet, uh, but it will be available next week. Uh, it's just some last, last minute updates that we're doing. Uh, but the, the interface is going to be exactly the same. So again, the idea is that all of the LLMs, all the agents that we have selected for the benchmark, they respond to all the questions. You are able to see summary information, how many uh, characters they used, how much time they used, how much it costs, very important. Then you are actually able to see all the answers that every LLM has provided. And you can see the feedback from our evaluator agent. So not just the points and whether it's correct or incorrect, but you can see the feedback as well. And there are uh, some examples where it should be incorrect for some and, of the- And the evaluation 
LLM, I'm guessing, is something that you can select, or is it something that you default that you use internally? It could be fine tune it, but basically, it's just another agent. So yeah, we will give it the ability for people to choose whatever they want as well. Yeah. Uh, so for instance, here we have a couple of questions that were marked as incorrect for some LLMs. Some LLMs are correct. And you can read the feedback and judge whether you agree or not. But actually, we have tested it on many different custom uh, benchmarks, and it's very uh, provides very good results. And the summary graphs give you cost efficiency, give you accuracy score. So basically, you want to pick somebody who is not very expensive, but at the same time provides good accuracy. That uh, gives you an idea to give, to have an overview. So why why custom benchmarks? Uh, people often, like when the new LLM comes out, they do like GMAT testing or, or, or lawyer bar exam, for instance. But that does not give you any useful information at all because you want your agents to perform well using your knowledge, your memory, like your corporate knowledge or your personal knowledge. And GMAT test doesn't give you anything. Here, you can create a benchmark that tests for the correctness of, for instance, answering your knowledge base questions. And this way, it becomes sort of an integral part of, of your uh, development cycle. When you design an agent, you make some changes, then you run the benchmark, you see that it's still accurate. Okay, great, I put it into production. And basically this way you can have a full cycle of, uh, of deployment and, uh, and, and design and testing and then everything else. So let me just see if I can do one final demo here real quick. Uh, because as I mentioned, what you can do, uh, you can put those agents into cloud. You can access them via API. You can access them via this <clears throat> chat interface that we have seen already uh, many, many times here. Uh, or alternatively, and this is something currently in beta, but we are introducing it soon. Let me just see if I can show this one to you. Uh, we have an ability to use any of the agents <laughs> in, um, in Discord. We use Discord for all our internal uh, company, uh, company needs. And whatever agent you create, you can use the chat interface or you can use it uh, in, in Discord as well. And for instance, let's, I don't know, let's um, demonstrate some additional functionality which we never showed so far, which is the ability of our agents to understand the pictures. So let's just make Anton, there was a there was a menu item called monitoring on the prior screen. Um, is that monitoring the workflows in real action, or real time? I'll, sh I'll show it to you in a second. Yeah, to just finish this one. This agent diagram is good. And how can you improve it? And then we simply paste our picture here. So. It takes some time for it to understand an image and then we provide the response. But for now, while it does that, let's uh, switch to the question that you have asked. Um, monitoring. Yeah, so basically what we have is a bunch of statistics for all of the agents that you are using, uh, which will be quite useful when you use them in production. So you can see number of agents you have, the cost, the tokens, some charts. Then you can see all the agents and how much does it cost you to, to run them. So just some detailed information of what's actually happening. And then, yes, exactly to what you were asking. Uh, we can go to agent executions and then we can see all, all of the runs of the agents in detail, how much time they took, what is the status. We can see all the nodes, uh, how they performed. Actually, this also kind of addresses the question about how we debug. So you can see all the monitoring results of all the runs we did here. So this is additionally quite useful for, uh, for any enterprise uh, development. 
So let's see if our Discord. Okay, it doesn't work. Well, one thing uh, should go wrong in every demo. So let's say it was the Discord, but believe me, we do have the Discord functionality and it will be available uh, as well. So, right. Um, we have looked at pretty much everything I wanted to discuss today. Hope you're not very tired. So a short term roadmap uh, we are be moving without tool is we will be expanding standard integrations as much as possible, starting with CRMs. Uh, HubSpot and Salesforce are top two for us, and that's going to create lots of opportunities for good, useful agents. We are working on a very cool execute code node which will allow uh, your LLMs to generate the code using you know, every trick we just discussed, using vector memory, etc. And then once it generates this code, it will be able to execute it in a closed off environment. And this way you will be able to create pretty much mind blowing stuff because then it can generate the code. If it does not compile, it can take this feedback and then improve the code. And this way you will be able to create uh, programming assistants that use your own code that you have so far, and it will expand based on it. So this is something we are really excited about. Uh, as mentioned, we will be adding graph rack, so graph retrieval data generation. As I mentioned in the beginning, combining graph rack and vector rack gives even better results. And uh, representing knowledge as graphs is uh, also a cool approach, uh, which we are working on. And then it's somewhat small, but uh, also important, we will be introducing a scheduler node that allows you to run your agents on the schedule. And there are a lot of use cases where this would be quite useful. And then of course, the big things we're working on is fleshing out the automatic generation of skill agents, uh, which is sort of the uh, kind of holy grail to make sure the agents are completely autonomous and are able to improve themselves. So big picture, we already have skill agents with basic learning. Uh, we have discussed them today in a lot of detail. We welcome all of you to start experimenting with what we have. Uh, we are able to create tasks agents that coordinate other agents. And uh, we didn't have enough time, but we actually have a node that allows you to run your agents as sub agents. So this way you are able to create an hierarchy, uh, which will become quite useful. And then obviously the ultimate goal is to create completely autonomous agents that coordinate these task agents that are able to fulfill very, very complicated um, tasks for humans, but this is an active area of research. This too is something that you can start playing with today already. That's it, that's all that I had for you today. Thanks a lot for your attention and for your questions. So once again, we have the studio, we have the university. Both of them are very actively developing. We welcome all the feedback. We want to develop uh, all, both of them with you. Our official launch date, once again, is next week. So you're welcome to start playing with the tool, but there may be some uh, twinkles, which we are fixing along the way. All of them will be done by next week but if you want to try it now please do so and we are always happy to talk to you